Hey, this is Sugar Hill, and you're watching Lights Out. This is Fesselcon for Lights Out, proudly sponsored by Spartans Law. It's a late Sunday evening. Honoured to be joined by Spencer the Knowledge Fear on Spencer. Good evening. Asalaamu Alaikum. How you doing, brother? Hello, Mr. Faisal. How are you doing, bro? Alhamdulillah, I'm not too bad, brother. Still very tired from getting in late um, from a cracking night of boxing at the O2 Arena, but that's what we got to do, right? It's in this boxing world of graft. Yeah, it was excellent, bro. It was, it was excellent. Very, very good show. Um, obviously, we'll kick off with the main event. Derek Chisora beating Joe Joyce. Firstly, thoughts on the fight itself? Um, it, it was excellent. Uh, if you heard anything that I was saying prior to the fight, I said that it was going to be that fight. I said it on the fight is right, me and Tundi. And it was literally that fight. It was a fight where we watched that and it was draw-droppingly good. Uh, fair play to Derek Cesora, who turned back the clocks um, and fought with his heart. But he fought with a lot of ring generalship. You know what I mean? I really did enjoy the fact that we shoulder rolling when Joe was trying to throw his right hand. Um, um, what was it? In the ninth round when he floored Joe, he shouldered and came back with his right hand. It was kind of reminiscent of when Archie Moore, what was that? 55, I think, or 54. When he when Archie Moore fought Rocky Marcelo and dropped him, he did the same thing. Guy threw a shot at me, shoulder, and came straight back with a shot and knocked him over. Um, but yeah, great fight. Um, I kind of, I really, not kind of, I really do feel sorry for Joel Joyce. Um, the hardest thing is this, when you go into a fight and people are looking like it's a foregone conclusion, right? The whole, his whole camp and everybody else, because I spoke to his camp, they weren't looking at it, because uh, even myself, I'm not going to lie, as much as I wanted Derek, I wanted Derek to win. I couldn't really see him winning. And Derek fought his heart out and got the and got the victory. So I'm yeah, I'm chuffed over that. But in this sport, we are taught quite simply, never overlook anybody because you never know what could happen. And and you know what I mean? And that's what we got. That's what we got. We got um Derek winning winning a unanimous points decision. So fair play to Derek Sazora. Derek's getting a lot of praise and rightfully a lot of praise, rightfully so, um, coming towards the end of his career, and yet he's still managing managing to beat top contenders in the heavyweight division. Uh, but what did you make of Joe Joyce's overall performance, Spencer? Um, Joe, the, the, Joe Joyce did nothing different than what he did in the Cash Ali fight. He didn't nothing. He did anything different. Joe Joyce isn't gonna go around, and, and he's very deceptive as well because Joe Joyce. You can see he does that Caballero stuff where he can jump in the air, spin around and all the rest of it. But he doesn't bring that to the ring. He doesn't bring that kind of level of athleticism. He trades on toughness by throwing a lot of punches. Whereas he's, 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 he has to be highly athletic to do the other stuff that he can do. But unfortunately, he doesn't bring that presence when he's fighting. He brings a different kind of style of, I'll just wear you down. And, and he traded on toughness. And now you would be found out on the toughness, because I'm not saying that he's not tough, but when you bank on, I'm a tough man, I'm a tough man, I know what to do, I'm a tough man. If water can erode rock, you getting hit heavily by certain guys right throughout the game, it's going to take its toll. And we saw it in the Zhang fight the first time, uh, and then in the second, second fight as well. But it's very, very difficult what that does to you psychologically. You've got to be a really, really mentally strong human being to come back from two KOs and say, well, I'm going to rebuild. And then the worst person to do it to is like I was saying earlier on the fight is right. Darius Cesaro is on PEDs, but the PEDs that Darius Cesaro is on isn't performance enhancing drugs, it's performance enhancement desire. And that's what he's got. And he's had that and he's come out successful. So props to Derek Cesaro. What where does Joe Joyce go from here? He's obviously, I believe, he's thirty nine years of age. He's suffered three defeats in the division to real good fighters. What does Joe Joyce do next? But more specifically, what what do you think he should do next, uh, Spencer? Well, 
the thing about it is this: I, depending on is is he still a commodity and people want to see him, then Joel Joyce can rebuild. But he's gonna have to also take into consideration that the purses that he was getting before, he ain't gonna get those purses, right? And you know what I mean? Joel Joyce can rebuild, I believe. But it's whether he's got the desire in his heart to say that he wants to rebuild. Um, and then there's a lot of technical errors that I see him doing that he needs to improve on. Um, but in saying that, the guy was an Olympic silver medalist. A lot of people thought that he could have won the gold. You know what I mean? He he was also um a European, a European medalist. He was also a gold medalist at the Commonwealth Games. He was also a national champion in the amateurs. He's done a lot of stuff. So I would like to see him just trying to reevaluate and 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 be genuine about if he wants to continue boxing. And if he does and he has the desire to do it, then it's not for anybody to say what he should do from what he shouldn't do. Because and I think he could take also homage from Derek Sazora. How many times we say Derek Sazora's done, he's done, he's done, he's done, he's done, he's done. We've been saying that about Derek for the last eight years. And he just keeps on coming back, keeps on reinventing himself, keeps on, right? But fair play to Derek Sazora. Derek says he wants to get to 50 fights. I hope that he does get to 50 fights and then call it a day. Well, he's on 48 now. So that's two fights remaining. Yeah, two more fights, yeah. yeah, yeah. Would you be, yeah. would you, as a, as a boxing fan, would you be happy to see him versus Dillian White free? I would like to see that fight next. Um, easy fight to make. I don't think it would be an easy fight to make, but I'd still like to see it um, because of because of the things that I don't think Dylan is allowed to fight in the UK at this present moment. Um, I heard that as well. But yeah, but I'd I would still like to see that fight. You know, maybe they can be in Ireland or maybe out in Saudi Arabia. You never know. Um, but those two together, they always make for a good fight. So I'd be excited to see that. Okay, um, just want to get your thoughts on. Um... Adam Hamed's performance last night, Prince Nassim's son, um, signed with Frank Warren and Queensbury. So exciting times to see another Hamed in the in the sport. Uh, I know you can't take away too much of his first two fights, but what have you made of him? And what do you think he's capable of achieving in this sport? It's really early doors. Two fights in, right? It's two fights in from a kid who hasn't had any amateur experience. It's a lot of pressure on him as well because we know what his father did. You know what I mean? I've known Nassim Hammond since I've been 16 years old. First time I met Nassim Hammond was at the London Arena, which was owned by Frank Warren, um, when Gary Stretch boxed a man called Derek Warble. Um, and I remember meeting Nassim Hammond then, because we were the same age. And I was I got work experience for the Boxing Monthly magazine. They liked me so much that they would, every big fight they'd send, they'd send me to go to cover it. And I was 16 then. So I would say when it comes to like Nassim Hamid, because Nassim Hamid is so big of a human being. Uh, he's so he's an iconic figure in, in professional boxing. It's very difficult when you're saying your sons are going to come through now and and what they're going to do because a lot of pressure on, on the son. But you know what? I'm taking it for easy. He's only a two-fight novice, right? It's only two fights. But I do believe because you've got a good team around him. You know what I mean, I rate Sam Jones. Me and Sam are good mates. Uh, Jamie Moore is a very, very good trainer, and I mean a very good trainer. And not only that, but you've got your dad at the helm as well, um, um, maneuvering stuff for you. Uh, I, I believe that if he's maneuvered rightly and, and put in the right fights for him to grow and learn, then he, he looks like a decent young prospect. You know what I mean, I, I watched his fight yesterday. He's got all the moves and everything else. Um, as soon as it clicks for him to start to understand it, then yeah. But the the amazing thing is like. Um, on Friday at the weigh-in, after it, um, we, we we meant to make dua, and to you guys you don't know, to, we made we broke to make prayer, mm -hmm. and and I, and let me tell you this: whatever Nassim Hamid accomplished as a professional fighter, he's gonna accomplish so much more as a humanitarian. Yeah. Remember, I'm telling you this. Right, we we prayed together, and I'm gonna I ain't gonna lie to you. After the prayer, he said some words and stuff, and I welled up. You know, I started crying. Right, I'm not ashamed to tell you. So Nassim Hamid is a very very powerful individual. 
his his children have that that same powerful energy and i wish them nothing but the best in their career and i wish that they, they're blessed that, that god allah blesses them with the best in this world and in the hereafter i can relate to what you said about his uh, sons i met them during fight week sammy and adam for the first time really nice boys beautiful and, kids man yep hopefully they have a good long safe and successful career in boxing yeah um moses itauma um that obviously he thanked marius whack during fight week for taking the fight because he said that nobody wants to fight me at the moment um is it fair to say that we potentially we're potentially looking at the guy that could be next in line after Fury, Joshua, Usyk? Do you do you look at Moses Atoma as the real future of the heavyweight division, or do you still one million percent, okay. one million percent? The kid is very special. He's very talented. He's got good movement. Uh, puts his punches together so well. I thought that he was going to stop Marius Wack, but I thought he'd go about five six rounds. I speak to one of my guys. Um, ben Gray, who he brought down the Nigerian High Commission because uh, Moses Atama's father is Nigerian, right? Um, and I was looking at that and I was saying to myself, like, yeah, most probably take it out. They think you do that quick. The kid's an animal, and you have to realize like how good the kid is because when you speak to guys in the game, guys who are experienced in the game, they're saying that he is the best heavyweight that they've seen. Certain people. Um, a poor model spot. Uh, Martin Bowers of the Peacock Gymnasium, he's a very good trainer manager, a good friend of mine. He was saying that he's the best that he's seen. And I said, better than who? He said, better than Frank Bruno, better than Tyson Fury, right? Better than Joshua. He said, better than Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis is one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. Martin so, Bowers. Martin Bowers said this to me. He said, no, nah, seriously, spreading the kids mastered. And I'm saying, okay. And and I first got aware of Moses Atama when he was about, I don't know, what was he, 17? And he, he boxed in the championships. And it was Ron McIntosh that did the commentary for it. And Ron was telling me, Spence, this, this kid, he's bad. So from then, I've had kind of been in my front and noble with my brain to think, oh, okay, let me look out for this kid. But I didn't think he was going to be that good. He's absolutely fantastic. And to, I don't care if Maris White was 75 years old. Nobody don't do that to Marius White like that in two rounds. Come on, man. Right. I saw it was just last year I saw Marius White go ten rounds with with Fraser Clark. So no, the most of the time is a real thing. He's a real and he's a very hospitable and polite young man as well. I wish him nothing but the best. What do we do next with uh, Moses Atoma? Because him and Frank have constantly uh, mentioned that it's they, it, if they find it get really hard to find opponents. So, I mean, do you, would you like to see maybe a few more fights, or do you think perhaps? No, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, who would take the fight? Uh, Moses Atama versus Charles Martin, the former IBF heavyweight champion. Okay, good I, fight. Yeah, yeah, that I think that's the fight that Moses Atama should be up for next. And it'd be I'm interesting because it'd be two, it'd be two southpaws going up against each other. But I'd like to see Moses Atama versus Charles Martin. And now that I've said it. I guarantee you that people start scratching their head because that's one thing I know that Charles Martin will take that fight. Would you not rather we see Moses Atama versus Johnny Fisher? Because my understanding is Moses Atama. No, no, no. 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 I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. I'm not going to be wrong. I like Johnny Fisher a lot. Yep. Um, um, but at this present moment, Mo Moses Atama has come from amateur pedigree and done really well. He done really well in the amateurs, didn't he? Right. Yep. Um, so no, um, I wouldn't want to see that fight now. I'd like to see that fight later down the line. I wouldn't want to see it now because um, Johnny Fisher hasn't had that experience yet to go up against Moses Atama, and that's no disrespect to Johnny Fisher. I'm saying yet, but he's his potentiality is very very big. So maybe later on down the line, then maybe we can make they can they can make that fight, but not now. I wouldn't want to see that fight now. I'm just going to be real. Okay, I totally understand that. Um, moving forward, we I'm going to move you away from boxing. We had uh, the UFC, uh, UFC three or four. It was in Manchester last night. What did you make on how Dana White and the UFC catered for the US fans and broadcasting that fight late in the morning as they would do over in the US? And 
do you not believe that maybe that potentially could have affected the fighters' safety, given the fact that it was a UK show, but the fights were coming on at a US time? Yeah, but you're saying this if, like, when Leon Edwards became world champion, he knocked out Usman, yeah? Yeah. That fight was in Vegas, right? That's right. Okay, then. So there's a big time difference. There's a six, seven hour difference. You should be acclimatized. And at the end of the day, is this the UFC is a mega house. And so UFC have to cater for that American market because that's where they're going to make their money, right? Similarly to if we were to go back um, to 986 when Frank Bruno fought Tim Wilberspoon for the WBA Heavyweight Championship of the World at Wembley. Mm -hmm. um, that fight came on at such a clock in the morning. is Wembley Stadium, right? And it came on very early in the morning to cater for American TV. And that, that was also on HBO. So with, with, with something like this, it's going to be the same thing. They have to cater for the market that's making... I know Leon earned really good payday. He got, he got financially rewarded greatly. So then you just got to go do those things. I think it was good that because... Like I came, I came indoors, and when I came indoors, like that fight was on. I said, "What is this a rerun or something?" It's like, you know what I mean? And and my brother was saying, "No, no, 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 no. It's 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 the fight. It's now." You know, look on the screen. It says live, and then I, I couldn't believe it. And yeah, so I don't think, I don't think that that was bad for you talking about the safety because as long as they're, they're given notice to say, "Right, we are fighting at this time." then you got to change your body clocks. Because if you've flown out to America, you just to change your body clock. It's just like you're fighting here. Uh, but that could have affected him because Leon Edwards looks completely flat in that fight. And I've seen Leon. Leon don't really fight like that, but he did. He fought really flat. There was no oomph in him. But I'm not taking nothing away from um, Bilal Muhammad becoming the first Palestinian UFC world champion. And it's kind of weird in things because everybody's backstory. You go up with something like Leon was the underdog and he came with a backstory, especially when he got motivated by Dave Lowell in the corner. Uh, and then he comes out, he knocks out Usman. Now you had a man who was a massive underdog, massive betting underdog. Um, and the Palestine crisis right now is headlines. You're getting someone from Palestine coming up to go and fight you for your title. His story is bigger than yours. So what you're meant to do is a smashing. But Leon was very flat. I do think, like, because that was the best um, Bilal Muhammad that we've ever seen. Now, in a rematch now, I think the best Leon Edwards will beat the best Bilal Muhammad. That's what I think. But you know when you do win titles, it does, it elevates you. So we don't know what's going to happen. But, you know what I mean? I was gutted for Leon because I, I really like Leon. He's, you know what I mean? I regard him a friend, so I got a lot of time for Leon. Well, listen, I'm pretty sure there might be a rematch later down the line. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, yeah. We're heading into fight week, uh, Riyadh season in Vegas. Terence Crawford bids to become uh, world champion at 154 pounds. Takes on uh, Israel Madrimov. Is this Crawford's toughest test, given the fact that he's going up in weight against... No, it's not. No, it's not. Okay. No, it's not. Terence Crawford is an intergenerational talent. A special, uniquely special, gifted trains hard professional fighter who understands the nuances, the angles, knows to punch with someone, knows not when to punch with someone. And I've got Terence Crawford handily winning this fight. Terence Crawford is on another level. And that's that. He's a special, special guy. Do you expect Crawford to, obviously you say you believe he's going to win this fight uh, next weekend. Do you then expect him to go up and get that fight with Canelo Alvarez if he can come through Edgar Belanga. Well, we've seen, we've, we've seen his excellency, Turkey Al Sheikh, say, look, Canelo, I'm going to speak to you directly, not through this middle person or that. I will speak to you directly. I will make this fight happen. I'll make your offer that can make this fight happen. I hope that it does happen. But first, not overlooking Magnumov because he is a good fighter, but I just think there's levels to this thing. And I see Terence Crawford stopping him in about six, seven rounds. That's what I see. If not, he's going to comprehensively beat him on points. But that's what I see. So hopefully, um, Canelo's fighting 
Belenga, right? Yep, that's right. That's that Nobody was. has no interest in that fight. I don't. Me just mentioning it, I felt sleepy. So I have no interest in that fight, but Khalil let it come out successful. Khalil, people talk about, oh, Khalil's a back home, but look at Khalil's resume. Let's calm down a bit when we're pulling my back. All right? The man went up to like heavyweight and knocked out Kovalev. Come on, give me a, give me a break. So, but we still want to see you against that, to have that big fight. And that would be a massive, massive fight. I spoke to Colin Hart at Fight Week. Um, the day that I spoke to him, news broke to all of us that Tyson Fury will be sticking with his same team going into the rematch with Alexander Usyk. And Colin Hart said the only change he needs to make to his team is his father, John Fury, and that he shouldn't be allowed in the corner. What's your thoughts on Tyson going in with the same team? And did you have, did you expect him to make any changes after the defeat to Alexander Usyk? I don't, I don't think that Tyson Fury needs to make any changes per se, right? What Tyson Fury needs to do is just have one voice in the corner. That's the only major change. Just have one voice in the corner. And, Rich, and Sugar Hill has to take that. You know what? Maybe going up to this fight, we're going to see the real Sugar Hill, right? Like where he's going to tell, because Sugar Hill is very respectful of John Fury. John Fury is actually a nice guy. I'm going to be real with you. But it's like you put a camera on him, he just ch- you get, he turns into this megalomaniac, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So we we shall we shall we shall see, but there should just be one voice in the corner. I echo back to um, September of eighty one, Sugar Leonard, Sugar Leonard um, versus Tommy Hearns. One voice in the corner, and that was Angela Dundee, who, who told Sugar Leonard that you're blowing it now, son. I mean, at the end of the twelfth round, you're blowing it, and he just oh, shit. He had to look into himself. You need one voice in the corner. What I realize now, when big fights now, you got guys are in the corner and all the rest of it, that everybody's looking for that TV soundbite now. That's what it feels like to me. Like, I'm going to say something that's going to sound so profound that it's going to be used forever. No, let's think about saying something profound that's going to penetrate your fighter to motivate your fighter, that he can go back to saying, well, this is what I practice in the gym with my guys, and we just take it on from there. Do you see any any different outcome in the rematch? Do you believe Tyson can win the rematch? And if he does, would you like to maybe see a bit more of a f- on the front foot approach? No, no. The, listen, I tell, I'm going to tell you now how how Tyson Fury beats Usyk. Tyson Fury can beat Usyk with four with four punches. He can beat Usyk. It's a double jab right hand, double jab right hand left hook. That is it. He could do that and box and beat him ugly by not getting involved. And every time that Usyk makes a slight step forward to, to, to aggress towards him, his offensive tactic should be like to pull counter, to pull, throw his jab. If he does that, he can beat Usyk, but he won't beat Usyk in a barn burn. He'll beat Usyk on something which we could be deemed as a technically boring fight. I don't want to promote that part of it, because we know how good the last fight was, but I'm saying that is how Tyson Fury has to beat him, because Usyk is going to do exactly the same thing as last time, and now that Usyk knows that he can hurt him, he's going to be more confident in getting into punching range and landing big blows, and so there lies the difference. Okay, well, listen, it's a rematch we're all looking forward to, and um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one, and look, when we've written Tyson off in the past, he's proven me wrong a number of times, and I'm pretty sure he's more than capable of doing it again. Uh, Spencer, is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, no, I'm just going to say to everybody, please download the Almadina 313 app. It's a charity organization that's run out in Banbury. Um, and they're doing fantastic things around the world. And they're doing fantastic things in, in the UK. And it doesn't matter what color, what religion, whatever. If you need help, um, I've noticed what the Almadina 313 has done, and I'm so honoured to say that I'm I'm a, I'm a part of a fantastic team. So, yeah, that's it. Well, Spencer, because you've always been good to us, what we'll do is we'll copy the link and we'll share it in the description of this video. And we'll oh, thank it. you so much. It's the Almadina 313 charity. It means a lot. We're okay? happy to help. You're good to us, so it's the least we can do. And hopefully, Thank you very much, my bro. Hopefully we can help the the calls as well. Uh, Spencer, thank you very much for your time. I'll let you continue with your Sunday night. 
And inshallah, hopefully I'll catch up with you at a fight week soon, perhaps maybe the September 21st yeah. in Wembley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt I'll see you down there. Um, I know I'll be doing some bits with Gold Star, so massive big up to Spencer Brown um, for hooking me up. I'm grateful for the work. And also, I've got a funeral in the morning to go to. Um, Jumping Jack Frost, the very renowned, famous music DJ, his mother passed away, so I'm going to that funeral um, tomorrow. So, you know, I mean, my condolences to all of um, Jumping Jack Frost's family. Thank you, my bro. Thank you very much for your time, Spencer. Once again, thank you for talking his lights out. Hi, man. Love. <laughs>